Hello there and welcome to my video on how to paint poppies in 10 minutes. The colours I'm going to be using today are Permanent Rose, Prussian Blue for the lilac colour that I'm going to be using and then I for the greens I'm going to be using Olive Green with a new colour that I bought called Iron Plum um, by a company called Wallace Seymour Fine Art Limited um, who make very interesting watercolours from minerals that they collect out and about. The brushes I'm using um, are travel brushes. I've got a slightly larger one and a smaller one for more sort of delicate work. Um, I try and do the bulk of my painting using the larger brush, as you can see I'm doing here. Um, I've mixed a lilac between the, the permanent rose and the Prussian blue on my palette and I'm just doing little blobs You'll be able to see in a bit more detail in a minute when I've worked out how to zoom the camera. Always try and use a brush that's as big as you can possibly get away with. Um, what we don't want to do for little sketches um, is just get into finite, minute detail straight away. So you want to layer on as much paint as you can as quickly as possible. Uh, that's my approach at least. Um, the other thing I quite like to do is just mix up the colours a bit. So... Um, whilst I'm painting, I actually, I don't keep a bit of paper next to me like a lot of other people do um, to test their colours. If it's not quite the right colour, then I just mix it up again and just apply it to the, uh, the page. Because it doesn't really matter to me whether the, it's exact colours I'm using. What you can see here is I'm blobbing in, or dobbing, some colour. Uh, whilst the original, the first layer is still wet, so you can see that it's spreading nicely the colour um, up the petals. And that's a really nice effect. It's called wet on wet. It's a different technique to wet on dry, as if you're applying paint to already a dry surface, then you'll get a very crisp, clean line. Whereas if you're applying paint to a wet surface, then it merges out a little bit and creates a lovely effect. Um, here I've mixed up uh, the green. I've added a bit of this olive green to my, uh, what was that colour called again? Iron Plum. Um, because it's quite, it was quite an unusual green actually. It was almost not green. It was, um, it was almost more grey than green. Um, so I'm just doing a few little blobs there with my paintbrush. You'll notice that it's pooling quite a lot. Um, I didn't actually have any tissue paper to hand when I had uh, when I was doing this. Um, otherwise, I might have dabbed dabbed it up a little bit. Um, the danger with having pools of paint is that um, it will create a cauliflower effect as it's drying. Um, so it won't dry uh, consistently. It'll create a weird effect. I like the weird effects, so it's not the end of the world for me. But if you want to control the paint and how it's drying, then um, try and soak up those pools of paint. Um, you can do that with a clean, uh, dry brush, or you can do it with a little bit of tissue paper, just dabbing, not stroking it. So here I'm just adding a few little details to the flowers. And the petals to give them a sort of a 3D effect because obviously there's a petal that's closer to me and a petal that's further behind and I didn't get the detail when I just put the first layer down earlier. So um, the uh, poppies are quite wrinkly actually. Don't be straight afraid to go in with quite strong colours as well, that's one of the things that beginners make, um, mistakes that beginners make. Um, they tend to be a bit wishy-washy. Um, I'm actually I'm I've got my water and my paint down there. Next time I do um, a plain air tutorial, I'll make it so that you can see my paint kit and the water and the sort of the consistency of the paints I'm using. I've still got some work to do with my videos. <laughs> I'm hoping to um, do a few more of these plain air sketchbook sort of series. And I'm um, hoping to potentially do a, a course that people can download on Skillshare. Watch this space. So here I've got my fine brush. Um, and when you're doing long lines like that, 
don't try and sketch them. Try and do a long, consistent line. Um, this will have a nice effect with your stem. So try and go as steady as you can, as straight as you can, or at least in the direction that you want. Um, as I was painting this, I did amend the composition a little bit because um, the composition, you know, what was there wasn't ideal for my sketchbook. So I mended the poppies a little bit so they were in the right place. Um, and this is just with a consistent um, greeny, blacky line. This uh, colour uh, called Iron Plum, it's not, it's not one that you'll see. Um, around the other colours you can get from Windsor and Newton and they're pretty standard for a lot of the makes. This Iron Plum, it's a sort of um, purpley black colour. So if you've got anything purpley black you could probably use a Payne's Grey. That would work. At the moment actually I'm using um, a bit of raw umber for the seed pod heads. as the, um, yes, they were a bit more yellow towards the top. So this is, as I said before, a quick sketchbook sketch. Um, this is me popping out into the garden just for 10 minutes in between, doing bits and pieces, just to have a bit of a chill out and a relax and to be a bit creative. So I'm not looking to produce an exact replica of what's there, but more of an impression. And it's more of a meditative exercise. I really love the sketches in the sketchbooks because um, it's just a way of experimenting without any pressure. You don't have to produce a masterpiece. Um, you can play away and play around with paints. You can try different techniques. Um, and that's what I've been doing in all of my sketchbooks. Sometimes I want to try a bit of pen and ink. Sometimes I just want to just do watercolours. Sometimes I'll just use my pencils. And it always depends on how much time I've got. Usually, uh, this is out and about. So it's usually whilst I'm waiting for somebody for a, a, to meet me for a cup of coffee or something. So often I only have about 10 minutes. So this is a pretty representative time span, actually, 10 minutes. Um, I've applied the shadow here and I've applied this a mix of the olive green and this iron plum colour to give me a bit of shadow and I'm applying that to the side, the right sides of the stems as well, just to give it more of a 3D effect. In order to make it look a bit more blended rather than a, a hard line, um, as by that point the original first layer of the stems had dried, I went over with a clean, wet, slightly damp brush and I just stroked down the stem again so that the, the shadow area blended with the other sides, side of the stem. You can see my other sketch there, it's of um, this lovely place called Madonna del Ambro in Italy. Again, that was another 10 minute one, waiting to go to a friend's house, but just stopping in there in the meantime. Um, here I'm just applying a little bit more of the sort of a purple colour to the sort of the lilac. It was um, a lot of a deeper colour towards the base. I'll work out the positioning, I think, a little bit more for the next video. <laughs> Still trying to work out the best technique and that's why I don't record very often it's because I get a bit stumped with how best to record and so then I end up not recording anything which isn't helpful so you're stuck with this for the time being. Just applying a little bit of extra yellow to the top of the seed pods. So thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to have a go yourself, um, then please do show me how you've got on. Um, you can find the picture up on my Instagram as well so that you can copy it as you so wish. And um, if you do do it, then tag me into your Instagram so I can have a look. Thanks for watching. Bye.